Hello everybody. Today we're going to talk about our first major concept that actually falls into the world of physics and that's the concept of speed and velocity. Our objective today is that the learner should be able to distinguish between speed and velocity. You should be able to tell me how they are similar and how they are different as well as we're going to talk a little bit about a concept called displacement. So our major vocabulary phrases for this lesson we're going to be discussing once again that idea of displacement We'll talk about two different types of speed. We'll talk about instantaneous speed and we'll talk about average speed. And then we'll also deal with velocity and how velocity is different from speed. So let's start out with just the concept, what is speed? Speed is the rate at which distance is covered. If you're driving in a car, you're going to be measuring things probably in miles per hour. So it's telling you how many miles can be covered in one hour. So a car's speed is measured by the speedometer, which tells us how fast we're going. Now that's how fast we're going at that exact moment in time, and that's what we call instantaneous speed. It doesn't tell you how much or how fast you've gone over the long stretch of driving down the highway. It tells you how fast you are going at that exact moment. If you want to know basically how fast you have gone as an average of the entire trip, then we're talking about something called average speed. And in order to find that, we take the amount of distance traveled and we divide it by the amount of time taken. So, for example, when you're driving under normal circumstances, the speed of your actual car varies. You might have to stop at a stop sign, you might get stuck behind somebody who is slow, or you might have to speed up to pass somebody. Those are examples of a changing instantaneous speed. But if you get drive 60 miles in one hour, you can say your average speed was 60 miles per hour. And this brings us to the idea of displacement. Displacement is the distance traveled away from a starting point. And I want to make this difference very clear. Displacement and distance are not exactly the same. Because if you travel around in a circle and wind up back where you started, your displacement is zero. According to this, if we're looking strictly at the definition, and we should be, this is the distance traveled from the starting point. So if my starting point is up here and I travel one big circle, I have moved zero units of distance from my starting point. Now I have definitely moved, and there's no argument that we've moved, but we definitely have not left our starting point in, in terms of displacement. So if I take a look at this little man down here, he wants to walk his dog. He's going to go 20 feet in this direction, 40 feet down, 20 feet to the left, and then 40 feet up. What is his actual displacement? His actual displacement is zero feet. He wound up exactly where he started, but his distance traveled is not zero feet. In order to find his distance traveled, we have to add up the actual distance that he has gone. So he's gone 20 feet this way, 40 feet this way, 20 feet back, and then 40 feet back up for a grand total of 120 feet. So he's got a distance traveled of 120 feet, but his actual displacement is zero because he ended back where he started. So now let's discuss velocity. We discussed speed. Speed is going to be a distance divided by a time. Or I should say, to be more correct, it's a change in distance divided by a change in time. That was our equation for speed. Velocity changes things because it adds a direction to it. So if a car is traveling north at 20 miles per hour, my velocity is north at 20 miles per hour. My speed is simply 20 miles per hour. This part of the description right here, this is speed. And we know how to calculate this. This is easy. But in order for there to be velocity, you have to add this thing. You have to add a direction. Now, does it have to be a cardinal direction, north, south, east, west? No. It just has to describe the vector of the speed. So for instance, if on paper I might see this, and this could tell me I'm going 20 miles an hour north, I could be going 20 miles an hour straight up, that is at the discretion of the person who's reading it, but at least I have a general idea for the direction of the vector for my speed. Velocity always must have both speed and a direction. If you have one or the other, but not both, you do not have a correct answer for velocity. So go ahead and give it a try. 
what is the velocity of the plane, what is the velocity of the car. This one is pretty easy. You can see it's 300 miles per hour to the east. I'm just going to say to east. You could also draw that as an arrow if you really, really felt like it. You could have done it like this. Uh, this car is a little different. What is the velocity of the car? We can say this one is simply 40 kilometers. There we go. Kilometers per hour to the left. We have no idea what direction this little guy is going. We simply know that relative to us, his direction is moving to the left. So that would be descriptions of his velocity. We have a description of the speed. We have 300 miles per hour. We have 40 kilometers per hour. And then we have a description of the direction that it's going. We're going east or we're going to the left. So those are velocity vectors. So in summary, velocity and speed. You need to know the difference between the two. Velocity is going to be a speed and a direction. And I'm going to go ahead and add that. We're talking about a speed and a direction. And when we're dealing with just simply speed, we just have to know, we just simply have to know a distance covered and a time. Distance and time. There we go. So speed is a distance divided by time. So actually I will make this more correct. I'll go ahead and scribble this out. I will say it's, it's distance divided by time. You need to know this. Change in distance, change in time. And velocity is simply a speed with a direction because we need to know where the object that we're talking about is going. We also discussed the difference between displacement and distance. Uh, displacement is your distance from the starting point. So displacement, and my example of displacement, once again, was the guy who starts and walks around a big circle. There's no argument that he moved. He just didn't go anywhere according to displacement. So this is going to be the distance from start and when we're talking about distance that's you can say that's the amount of ground covered it's the actual motion that you went through so that is what we covered in this short lesson um, we'll be discussing velocity and speed and displacement in class, so please make sure your notes are ready, and have a good day.